Hi, I'm Michael Gross, host of the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. This is B&O Steam Locomotive number 5300, President Washington, the first of a series of Pacific-type steam locomotives named for American presidents and one of the stars of the 1927 Fair of the Iron Horse. It is preserved at the B&O Railroad Museum as a part of the legacy of one of the most influential B&O presidents, Daniel Willard. Daniel Willard was born in 1861 in Heartland, Vermont. A lack of money and poor eyesight contributed to his leaving college after one semester. In 1878, he took a job as a track laborer on the Central Vermont Railroad. After four years of hard work, he had become a locomotive engineer and a good union man on a nearby line. During the economic depression of 1884, Willard was one of the men furloughed. To find work, he accepted a lower job on the Sioux Line Railroad. Over the next 25 years, he worked his way up the ladder on a series of railroads before being offered the presidency of the B&O in 1910. The B&O Railroad was in dire financial shape at the beginning of the 20th century. It had emerged from bankruptcy only to fall under the control of its bitter rival, the Pennsylvania Railroad. Willard initiated a sweeping series of improvements and reforms. He oversaw the development of new and innovative types of locomotives and had improvements like superheaters installed in older engines, all of which led to huge reductions in costs. He ordered the leveling and straightening of large portions of the B&O's mainline tracks, reducing travel times and the cost of operation. Within three years, the B&O was strong enough to earn its freedom, and the last Pennsylvania Railroad board member resigned. In October 1916, he was appointed a member of the Advisory Commission of the Council of National Defense and the following March, Chairman of the Commission. In November 1917, he was appointed by President Woodrow Wilson to be Chairman of the War Industries Board. After the war, Willard's foremost goal for the B&O was to provide the finest passenger experience possible. When he first arrived, he canceled all advertising for their passenger trains, saying, I will not advertise a service unworthy of the name of this railroad. One of his priorities was the radical improvement of the dining service. Soon, additions including fresh seafood and signature salads made the B&O's dining cars the favorite of passengers throughout the nation. He also added reclining chairs, and in 1931 he inaugurated the first fully air-conditioned train in America. Dan Willard was never afraid to add a personal touch. When the train he was riding was delayed without a dining car, he invited the passengers back to his private car and shared breakfast with them. By 1936, the B&O was rated as having the best service in the East. And now, a word from our sponsors. The B&O Railroad provided the first commercial transportation system between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. in 1835. The Thomas Viaduct, crossing the Patapsco River, is one of the world's greatest engineering marvels and remains today as the largest bridge of its kind and the oldest multi-stone arched bridge in the world. St. John Properties developed the nearby Troy Hill Corporate Center between these two great cities, comprising 15 acres and 150,000 square feet of office, research and development, and flexible corporate space. The historic viaduct still carries passengers and freight today, just like it did almost 180 years ago. Quick and easy connections via the railroad and the nearby BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport make Troy Hill Corporate Center not just another office park, but a vibrant business community accessible to all. Based in Baltimore, St. John Properties is one of the Mid-Atlantic's largest and most successful privately held commercial real estate firms. The company owns and has developed over 16 million square feet of property in seven states. As part of his tireless efforts to improve life for his workers, Willard launched a number of organizations. He established the company Employee Magazine, which ran for decades and attained a national readership. He started a company Glee Club and the Mount Clare Band, popular groups that continued strong until the very end of the B&O in the 1980s. There were also comprehensive sports leagues. 
Each year, dozens of teams from all along the line competed in official baseball tournaments. In Baltimore, there was fierce competition in the B&O's duck pin bowling. The 1920s were a difficult period between labor and management, but Dan was uniquely able to bridge the gap. He had worked at nearly every job on the railroad on his way to the presidency, and he had been a union man himself. He lobbied hard for the Adamson Act, which established the eight-hour workday. During the great labor strike of 1922, as other railroads were hiring guards and cracking down, he earned the trust and respect of his men by working with them to address their grievances. He was so affable that he was known to his employees simply as Uncle Dan. During the lean years of the Great Depression, Dan forged a compromise for a 10% nationwide deduction in wages for both labor and management. With this achievement, he was featured on the cover of Time magazine. In typical Willard fashion, he lowered his own wages by 20%. His legacy is best summed up by a sign he made and kept on his desk throughout his management career. It read simply, suggestions are always in order. He was always willing to discuss new ideas, no matter who brought them. It was a policy that served him well for his 31 years as president, the longest tenure ever held on the B&O. His vision and drive helped turn the B&O from an antiquity into one of the great railroads of America. Sitting under the watchful gaze of Uncle Dan Willard, this is Michael Gross. Thanks for watching the b and Railroad Museum Television Network. Interested in learning more about the b and Railroad Museum and Ellicott City Station? Follow us on Facebook and Twitter with daily updates on upcoming events, coupons, photographs, history, and things to do in Baltimore, you'll never be off track.